Deep Blue Sea 2 is a 2018 creature feature directed by Darren Scott. A paranoid billionaire develops a serum to unlock the human brain's full potential, but the enhanced bull sharks the serum is derived from don't take kindly to his tampering with Mother Nature. But before we dive into this superfluous sequel, I just want to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, then please think about hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. It would really help me out. So thanks. Also, there will be full spoilers ahead, but if that doesn't bother you, then grab your chilli sauce flavoured popcorn and whip out your superhuman serum as we dive into... Deep Blue Sea 2. So the movie begins with these two buggers doing some illegal shark fishing off the coast of South Africa. And one of them says, Come on, let's take a cheeky photo to celebrate our heinous deeds, because we're a right pair of shits, us two. Now say cheese. Cheeo! What was that? Oh, were you chewing on that knife again? No, I was to cut my tongue on my... Uh, Big again. But then they hear someone on the radio saying, Warning. If you can see orange smoke on your horizon, you are in danger. Does that look like orange smoke to you? Nah, it's more of a tangerine colour. I reckon we'll be fine. Then something gives the boat a bash and the baddies see a big shark swimming nearby. That's why we're out here, baby. That's on it. Gold! Gold? Are these fellas blind or something? I bet they couldn't even tell the difference between a lemon shark and a lime shark. Or is it scientifically known? Negaprion citrus fishes. But they soon notice it isn't just one shark, but five of them, and they're swimming towards them in a V formation. Have you seen sharks swim like that? Only when they're intent on killing shark fishermen, which I don't know about you, but I've just quit being a shark fisherman like right now. Yeah, me too. So, uh, we'll be okay, right? Theoretically, yes. <laughs> Quick, get back on the boat! No, 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 no. That's exactly what they'll expect us to do. I say we flail around like a fish in distress. That'll surely confuse and drive them away. <laughs> oh no! My peerless knowledge of sharks has been subverted yet again! Then they give him the chomp too, leaving him thinking, I have no limbs, so I sink. Goodbye! Then the fellow who fired the flare rocks up to their boat. But the sharks are still around, so surely they'll eat him next! Then, plot twist for the muckers, he clicks his little red beeper, then the sharks turn around and ignore him. Just like every lady I try and speak to on a night out. But they don't know what they're missing. Because I've got an absolutely massive collection of Magic the Gathering cards. Then we get the Deep Blue Sea equivalent of a James Bond credit sequence. Drowning in the Deep Blue Sea. It's awfully cheesy. But at least we get to see this lady swimming with a great white saying, Excuse me, Mr. Shark, mind if I hitch a lift? I know what is lass. Where to? Land, please. Okie dokie, I'll drop you off in the shallows. Then I'm off to pester Blake Lively for a bit. The lady, it turns out, is part of an Oceanic Institute researching sharks. I'm gonna call her Clementine, because this video seems to have a citrus fruit thing for some reason. Anyway, she's giving a lecture to these students saying, So if there's anything to take away from today's lecture, let it be this. Don't be a dickhead. Any questions? Is there any type of shark you wouldn't swim with? A bull sharks. Because I saw one in a china shop, and to say it made a mess of the place would be a massive understatement. Once the lecture finishes, the students leave, and this fellow walks over to Clem and says, Hello, my name is Mr. G. Rapefruit. Uh, I'm not going to call you that. What's your first name? Jerry. Okay, Jerry, how can I help you? Well, you see, my boss is doing illegal experiments on sharks and needs an expert to question both his morality and methods. Right, and uh, what do I get out of it? A £20 gift card for Primark. 20 quid? You're having a laugh, aren't you? Oh dear, I knew that wasn't a sufficient incentive. That's why I'm throwing in this little cat piggy bank. Oh, it's so cute! Jerry, you've got yourself a deal. Elsewhere, we see the Red Beeper Man, who I'm going to call Richard D. Beeperman, or Dick for short. And he's returning to this movie's equivalent of the Aquatica facility, which appears to have had a bit of a downgrade, so let's call this one Aquaticac. Anyway, he parks up the boat and sharks and meets his mate Fred, who's just got out of bed, or at least that's what he said. So Dick tells him all the bad news, the sharks broke out last night, his boat's got a drinking problem, and if that's not bad enough, his shoes have developed a squeak he just can't get rid of. Well, they do say bad things come in threes. <laughs> Dick goes down into the underwater part of the facility to confront their resident tech guy about the shark escape. I'm gonna call this guy Lal Gimmer. So Dick says to him, What's the most important rule here? Um, don't scowl while wearing a vest? Okay, what's the second most important rule? Don't touch your beef jerky? Okay, right, let me rephrase the question. Do we want our sharks to escape? Well, no, of course not. Then how do you explain five sharks going for a goddamn joy swim? Dude, I seriously don't know, but while you're mad at me, I might as well be honest. I did take some of your beef jerky. You son of a bitch. Wait a minute. They've dug a bloody hole under the fence. How on earth did they manage that? 
I have no idea, but it definitely has nothing to do with me giving one of them a shovel for its birthday last week. You gave them a shovel? Jesus, topsy-turvy Christ, Lal Gimmer! Is there anything else you want to tell me to piss me off? Yeah, you have squeaky shoes. Ah! Meanwhile, Clem meets up with Jerry at the dock, and we're also introduced to newlyweds Mr. and Mrs. Chum. Oh, they're so in love. Only sharks could tear them apart. They're going to Aquatic Act 2 because they're neuroscientists. Also, I can't help but notice that Jerry is wearing another yellow tie, but with a different pattern to the last one. The bastard. Anyway, they head out on the boat to their doom. Oh, I mean, to the facility. Of doom. When they arrive, they're greeted by Fred, who takes them down below. And we see Dick coming out of the wet pool saying, Which one of you bollocks forgot to put the DPV on charge before bed last night? Eh? What do you mean it was me? Oh yeah, it was me, wasn't it? I think you need a new DPV. And I think you need to shut up, whoever you are. Who are you? I'm Clem. And I was invited by your boss because I like sharks. Then Clem notices what kind of sharks they have. Those are full sharks. Well, I hope you don't have any fine china knocking about because they'll smash the shit out of it. Then the big boss man walks in and says, Welcome. I see you met our test subjects. My name is Anthony Durable, but everyone around here calls me Durant. Like the Pokemon. Like the what? You must be... Uninterested in small talk. That's an unusual name, but fair enough. Would you all please follow me topside? I have something I'd like to show you. Dude, I swear, if Durant shows off his collection of Pokemon cards again, I'm gonna quit. So, everyone heads out into the fresh air and Durant says to Lal Gimmer, What flaps around in the water like a bell end? Ah, <laughs> you do! You didn't even give me time to answer, you shit! Thinking he's in danger, Clem dives in to help. But oh no, the sharks are heading towards them! Surely they are done for! Nope, Dick beeps his beeper, then the sharks beep off like good little beeps. When they get out, Clem says, How'd you do that, you mad bastard? And Durant says, I'll explain later, but in the meantime... Please put on some dry clothes, and we'll reconvene in the wet lab in an hour. Yeah, that wet lab better not be as wet as it sounds. If I get changed only to end up soggy again, I'm gonna be very grumpy. Then we see our resident bug steel type in his private quarters, and he's got a secret stash of chilli sauce of varying hotness. He gives one a shake, then pops the lid and thinks, Okay, you can do this. You promised yourself you'd build up a tolerance, so next time you share spicy chicken wings with everyone, you won't embarrass yourself. I mean, how the hell was I supposed to know what a ghost pepper is? <gasps> Anthony, what are you doing? Nothing, I, I'm just sat on my bed, brushing my hair. Fuck. Dick told me the sharks dug a tunnel yesterday, that's how they got out. Ha, clever little buggers. Right, once we've done our science shit, it looks like we're having sushi for dinner. Then we see this shark, eavesdropping on them, thinking, <laughs> I'm gonna tell everyone about his chilli sauce stash, then it'll look like a fool. A damn fool! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love eavesdropping, I do. Meanwhile, Mr. and Mrs. Chum are in the kitchen, and this bottle of water is like, Linda. Linda. Linda! What? You're gonna get eaten by sharks, and so is your husband. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, you're just a bottle of water. <gasps> Why'd you have to go and make it personal? Sometime later, everyone convenes in the wet lab, and Durant says, Now, I'm sure you're all curious as to why I asked you here. Something to do with sharks, I reckon, Chief. Well, yes, but it's much more than that. Something to do with intelligence enhancing drugs, I reckon, Chief. Why are you going to spoil this for me? Yes, I'm developing a super serum which increases human intelligence, and I'm testing it on these sharks. Well, that's mental, but please do continue. Artificial intelligence is becoming stronger every year, and they will destroy us. You've been watching Terminator on repeat, haven't you? Well, maybe I have, but if I'm right, my serum will keep humanity on top. So you're the saviour of the entire human race. Yeah, I'll be the entire human race minus one if you don't shut up. So what the hell do you need us for then? Well, not really, I just wanted to show off my sharks and that. Anyway, it's time for the Lady Shark's monthly health check, so they bring it up in the wet pool. While Durant talks with the chums, Clem has a word with another guy who works there who's a shark doctor or something. I'm gonna call him Buttons, cause his top has buttons on the shoulder which is a bit weird. Anyway, Clem is inquiring about Durant's fortunes and Button says, Do build a multi-billion dollar empire out of nothing. Impossible! You can't build anything out of nothing because nothing is intangible. Don't listen to him, Clem, he's full of shit! Meanwhile on the surface, Dick's boat is absolutely hammered and drunkenly drives itself into the power generator saying, Who says it's dangerous to drink and drive? <laughs> I see, I made it all the way home. <laughs> then Dick walks outside and is all like, Oh, but what have you done now, you pisshead? Oh, I am it. Someone's knocked over these barrels, eh? But it wasn't me. No, it was not me. <laughs> also, you've got squeaky shoes, mate. Back in the lab, Buttons is giving the lady shark her health check and says, So, any changes to your medical history I should know about? Well, actually, doctor, I'm pregnant. Oh, congratulations. You won't be saying that when they're ripping you to pieces. What was that? Oh, nothing. Also, can you please have a look in my throat while I'm here? I think I got a bone stuck in there last week. So he props open its mouth and reaches inside. Gah. Gah. Something wrong? Don't go to 
Shoot! Oh! Oh, she nearly bit my arm off like Stellan in the first movie! So in a panic, Fred lowers the shark back into the water. Elsewhere, we see Jerry on his laptop emailing his mates about Durant's secret stash of chilli sauce. And oh my god, the bastard's even got yellow earphones! What is this guy's problem? Then the generator up top explodes, which causes the elevator to malfunction, so the humans can't get out. Meanwhile, Jerry is wandering the corridors looking confused, when a shark starts slamming the walls, causing them to burst open, sweeping Jerry off his feet, and not in the romantic sense. Clem notices that the hallway outside the wet lab is filling up with water. Then the corpse of Jerry pops up with his face all ravaged beyond recognition, but his yellow tie is still intact. The absolute bloody cheek of this guy. Durant says, If all the sharks are out in the lagoon, who did that to Craig? Craig? Sorry, I meant Jerry. Then Clem says, Oh shit, I don't think Lady Shark is preggers no more. Yep, them baby sharks are inside Aquatic Hack and they're all like... <laughs> so with the elevator out of order, someone's going to have to swim to the surface using the DPV and call for help on the satellite phone. Clem volunteers, but Dick is like, yeah, I don't think so. There's no way I'm letting you risk that cleavage. But by the time he's done admiring her curves, they realise that Fred's taken off into the wet pool himself. They watch him through the big window, but then one of the sharks rams into him, knocking him unconscious, saying, Oh, sorry fella, I didn't see you there. <laughs> so Dick dives in to save him. Fortunately, he gets him back into the wet lab and Clem manages to revive him. But then the divvy immediately goes and sticks his head over the wet pool and gets it bitten off. Poor Fred. He lost his head and now he's dead. And the shark ate it between two slices of bread. It has to be said it was well fed. Do you have any more weapons? Bang sticks? The spear gun? Bastard swords? Mini guns? Tactical nukes? Nope, all we have is a bottle of water in the kitchen. Oh, I wouldn't bother. That bottle of water has a mean streak about an inch and a half wide. Then Dick hears some unusual creaking and says, Oh, there's some pressure control. Right before the wet pool erupts and the whole room fills with water. But we don't really get to see it because it would have cost way too much for the budget they had. So everyone gets separated and swept all over the place. But it's clearly just the same corridor from different angles with a different colour filter over it. We've got a blue corridor, a red corridor, a green corridor. And it's been a while since we've referenced a citrus fruit so let's have an orange corridor as well. So everyone shuffles around in despair because apparently no one thought there was even the slightest chance of this underwater facility becoming flooded. Oh and Linda's decided to take a nap because she's fucking lazy. Durant in particular is thinking, damn this water is freezing. Good job I kept a vial of chilli sauce in my pocket for emergencies. Oh yeah, warm them cockles you spicy treat. Then he bumps into Clem and Dick, the latter of which is about three foot smaller than the last time we saw him. Anyway, Durant tells them that if they can reach the filtration room then they might be able to climb up through the air shaft to the surface. Meanwhile Mr Chum finds himself chased by the baby sharks and ends up hanging off a pole while they try and bite his bum. Thankfully, they leave him alone and go and pester Lal Gimmer and Buttons, who get cornered in the living quarters. Lal Gimmer manages to climb up on the top bunk, but there's nowhere for Buttons to go, so he shuts himself inside the shower, thinking, oh well, at least I can give my hair a good wash while I'm here. Then the water level starts rising and it pours over the top of the glass door. So his hair does get a good wash, except he gets ravenous baby sharks instead of shampoo. When I was a kid, I used to be afraid that there was a shark in the bathtub, and that weasels would eat my feet if I dangled them off the sofa. Sounds mental now, but it made sense at the time. Back to the others and they find the filtration room, but that bastard Durant locks Clem out and breaks the door handle because he doesn't want her grassing on him when they get out. Dick is well pissed off and gives him a schmack. Then he tells Clem he'll come back for her, before him and Durant start making their way up to the surface. Elsewhere, that lazy bugger Linda finally wakes up from her nap and finds a locked door between herself and her hubby. But then she starts getting chased by the baby sharks, and instead of finding a way to evade them, she just stands in front of the locked door and gets pulled under, before popping back up with half a face like, Goodbye, my love! I hope you live a long and happy life! But if you ever remarry, I'll haunt you. Blech. Back to Durant and Dick and they've made it to the surface. Dick picks up the satellite phone and says, Hello, Mr. Satellite? Who's this? It's Dick from Aquatic Hack. Uh, what do you want? A pair of shoes that don't squeak. But that's beside the point. We need help. Ah, uh, no bother, pal. I'll send help now. Just keep an eye out for it. Uh. Meanwhile, Lal Gimmer bumps into Mr. Chum and he's all like, Where's Linda? The baby shark's got her. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sure she's in a better place. How is a shark's stomach a better place? <laughs> oh, hey, there's Clem trying to blow torch the door open. But then those baby shark shits turn up again. So Clem tells the fellas to escape up the air shaft while she laughably holds them back with a blowtorch. She does such a piss poor job though that most of them just ignore her and follow the guys. Back up top, Dick demands a key from Duran, for a reason which will become clear later. But he doesn't want to give it up. Give me the goddamn key or I swear to God I will throw you to the sharks. Please don't. Are you feeling froggy? Ribbit. Then he gives him the key and Dick says he's going back for the others. Only to hear Lal Gimmer's voice coming from the air vent. So he opens it up and pulls out Lal Gimmer. But when he lifts out Mr Chum, he's been bitten in half saying, Usually I'd have something clever to say, but I'm only half the man I used to be. 
Then we see Clem swimming out of the facility via the wet pool. She reaches the surface and somehow manages to swim another 30 feet with the shark right behind her and still manages to get out. I'm surprised she was able to swim at all under the weight of that plot armor. Coast Guard! Are you kidding me? How the hell are we supposed to all fit on that? Then a shark bursts out of the water and eats the drone, leaving Lal Gimmer saying, Why can't we catch a break? Just one break! Hell, I take half a break! What you need, sir, is a Kit Kat. Oh, I do love a Kit Kat me, like. It's gotta be chunky, though. And preferably caramel. So with the dock sinking, Dick says their only shot is to try and swim for the boat in the distance. That boat's the pisshead who got us into this mess. Look, he's probably sobered up by now, hungover and full of regret. Plus, we've got no choice. Oh, come on, there's gotta be another way. Hey, Lal Gimmer. What flaps around in the water like a bell end? Ugh, I do. Satisfying, right? So they make a mad dash for the boat, but Lal Gimmer gets pulled under by a shark. What a shame. Then one of them starts heading towards Durand, so he dives into the water to square off against the shark and says, Who is your daddy and what does he do? And it seems like it worked, until the shark bursts out of the water with Durant in its jaws before giving him a first class chomp. But it ain't over yet as Clem and Dick get to the boat, but the shark is heading right for them. It leaps out of the water with its jaws agape and then BAM! It takes two flares to the gob, which is apparently enough to kill a super shark these days. Oh, and surprise for the muckers, cause Lal Gimmer is still alive. Yay, I guess. Then Dick whips out that little red key and unlocks a box with it, which turns out to be a self-destruct button for the whole facility. An aquatic cat goes kablamo. And so the day is saved, but not really, because there's still super intelligent bull sharks on the loose. And they say Dick still has squeaky shoes to this day. End of movie. Well, although it may feel like a low-budget retread of the first Deep Blue Sea, I think this is a fun little sequel. Despite its obvious limitations, of course. Sure, it's not packed with many new ideas. Well, I thought the baby sharks were a cool addition, and some great shark kills definitely help compensate for the lack of originality. It's not a patch on the first movie, but I still enjoyed it. I mean, it's got a shark eavesdropping on a human conversation, so what more could you really ask for? So, Deep Blue Sea 2, what did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you love it? Let me know in the comments below, and if you could please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, it would make me happier than a pig in shit. So, uh, aye, do that, please.